I've done 50,000, 30,000, 20,000, 10,000, and now 5,000 pound grand tours. It does not get any cheaper than this. I will show you 10 cars today. All of them cost less than 5,000 pounds, and all of them offer you some kind of grand touring capabilities to take you on a nice long road trip around the continent. Hit like and subscribe if you like this kind of content, and without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> I love the Peugeot 406 Coupe. It's a stunning cruiser which comes with a 3 litre V6 engine producing 194 brake horsepower which you get to 60 in 7.6 seconds. You're not fooling anyone with a Peugeot but this car is genuinely very cool. Designed by Pininfarina, the famous Italian design house who are also responsible for some of the most beautiful cars to have ever existed. It comes on the same platform as the saloon and estate but with modifications to make the ride feel a bit more luxurious. With the V6 engine you also got a strut brace and some four pot Brembo brakes but I would say the main thing that lets this car down is the interior. Unfortunately, it remains very Peugeot. It's not horrible, but compared to many other cars on this list, it won't give you the same luxury on a Grand Tour. These start at the £2,000 mark, and £5,000 get you into a 2003 model with 50,000 miles on it. There are known build quality and electrical issues with these, as well as radiator problems too. Next up, we have the VW EOS, which is effectively a convertible VW Golf in many ways, but VW genuinely puts a lot of effort into making this a premium and comfortable convertible cruise at a reasonable price. You can even get it with the Golf GTI engine, the 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 producing 197 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.6 seconds. The key talking point of this car is of course the hardtop convertible roof, which is split into 5 pieces and has an integrated glass sunroof, so even if it rains you can still see the sky above you. It sits on the Mark V Golf platform and shares many components with it, but it actually has entirely new body panels and though the interior remains simple in typical VW fashion, you are able to find more premium materials in there. These start at around £1,500 with five grand getting you a 2008 model with 60,000 miles on the clock. That engine is pretty good but if you go for the DSG Auto just make sure it's been well maintained and watch out for excessive oil consumption. Moving on to our first of two Swedish cars on the list, the Volvo C70 T5 which is one of my favourite engines in it. The 2.5 litre turbocharged inline 5 which produces 220 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 7.4 seconds. This second gen C70 shares its platform with the S40 and if it looks a little familiar it's because you're thinking about the 406. Like the Pug, this was designed by Pininfarina, just their Swedish entity which is a joint venture between them and Volvo. The hardtop convertible roof was a nice replacement for the previous generation's soft top and coupe models, basically being the perfect middle ground. Irrespective of Pininfarina's involvement, it remains typically Volvo, with an amazing safety record and a simplistic interior, but given how useful the car is and how good it looks, I think it would be perfect for a grand tour. The starter around the £3,000 mark, and for five grand, you'll be getting a 2008 model with 60000 miles on it. PCV diaphragm ruptures are known on these as well as excessive oil consumption and low boost pressure in low gears. On to the second of two Swedish cars on the list now, it's the Saab 93 convertible which takes the executive saloon and estate car and refreshes it into a much sportier, much more grand tourery car to eat up the miles with. You can get it with a 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 engine which makes 251 brake horsepower which gets to 60 in 7 seconds. Like the C70 this is the second generation 93 and Saab literally spent every year refining these so when buying one your best option is to go as new as possible and if you can get post 2008 you'll benefit from the facelift as well which allegedly came with over 2000 changes so way more than I can go through in this video but the styling changes are quite clear. This is the cheapest car on the list as you'll find them starting at around £1000 with 5 grand being enough for a 2007 model with 100k on it. These have proven to be pretty durable since their release and outside of some overheating due to its size, it's been pretty strong. It would have been very difficult to ignore the highly important first generation Porsche Boxster 986 which is another convertible sports car with grand touring capabilities thanks to its 2.7 litre flat 6 engine which makes 220 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 6.4 seconds. It has the controversial 911 996 headlights but it's worth giving some love to regardless as it helped open the flood gates for Porsche's market growth ever since. And don't sleep on it just because it was built for a cheaper end of the market, Porsche still had to keep up their reputation so these aren't trash. Even the issues with bore scoring and IMS bearing aren't that bad on these as it was the S model that appeared to suffer most with these common issues. It has slightly less storage space for a tour than most other cars on this list but still enough for weekend bags that will get you on the road on your grand tour. These will run you around £3,500 at the bottom end with £5,000 getting you into a 2002 model with around 80,000 miles on the clock. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are, then do hit like and subscribe. It is a key reason why you should. If this video gets to 2,500 likes within the next three months, I will buy a Grand Tour for under 5,000 pounds and drive it on a long road trip. But hang on, if this video gets to 5,000 likes in that same time period, I'll up the budget to 10,000 pounds. And if this video gets to double that, 10,000 likes in three months time, I will buy a Grand Tourer for under 20 grand instead. Up the budget one more time and we'll drive that one on a long road trip. On to the top five now and in fifth we have the Mercedes SL350 from the R230 generation which comes with a 3.7 litre V6 engine that makes 268 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 6.4 seconds. You could probably argue the SL class is the most famous individual Grand Touring badge in the world given the 300 SL, 190 SL and all the other classic SL Grand Tourers that have blessed our roads since the 1960s. It's crazy to think that these will run you around 3k at the bottom end and 5k will get you a 2003 model with 50k on it. That's such great value for money if the SL truly is the Grand Touring badge. You'll probably be getting a preface if model for your money which is chill, it remains a pretty good looking car and given every previous SL generation has reached some kind of classic status, I don't see many reasons why this won't get there at some point too, especially with a classic looking interior and the cool quad lights. In fourth place we have a Rogue One, the Chrysler Crossfire which comes with a 3 2.2 litre V6 engine that produces 215 brake horsepower, which will still get to 60 in 6.3 seconds, pretty quick for the power. The only thing that detracts from this car being a Grand Tour is maybe its size, given that it sits on the same platform as the Mercedes SLK, which is the baby sibling to the SL we just spoke about. Literally outside of the styling on the interior and the exterior, this car is an SLK 320, and some of those changed parts by Chrysler would still bolt directly onto the Merc. It comes as a coupe or roadster, and personally I think the coupe is the better looking model, with more boot space given the larger hatchback design, making it more useful for a road trip. The start at around £2,000 with a 5 grand you'll be looking at 2005 model with 70k on it. Most problems are build quality related but the engine is generally known to be pretty sound. In third place on the list we have the E63 BMW 630i, a certified Grand Tour which comes in both convertible and coupe specs depending on which you prefer. Either way these come with a 3 litre inline 6 engine which make 256 brake horsepower meaning 0 to 60 comes in 6.3 seconds. This car sits on the same chassis as the 5 series but slightly shortened which means that the two cars share a lot of parts, which helps from a maintenance perspective. On release not everyone really liked the design, but personally it reminds me a bit of the 406 and C70 from earlier in this video, but more muscular and aggressive and therefore I personally quite like it. Of course the M6 of this generation would be the ideal Grand Tourer on this platform, but given the price, the 630i definitely offers you the best value for money. You need to spend around 3 grand to get into one of these and 5k will get you a 2005 model that's done around 90,000 miles. Water ingress, convertible roof issues and water pump issues are the most common problems I could find on these. Just missing out on the top spot, we have probably my personal least favourite car on the list, the Lexus SC430, which is the predecessor to the much nicer, much more premium looking LC500. Irrespective, it comes with a 4.3 litre V8 engine, which makes 282 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.2 seconds. This is actually the second generation SC, and despite besmirching it two sentences ago, I do think that it's a great platform for aesthetic modifications, given it's quite a clean overall look. Irrespective, it does have that nice hardtop convertible roof, a decently sized boot, an interior clad with leather and of course some decent reliability helped by it being a Lexus. Unfortunately it has instead been criticised for bad handling and ride in a few reviews and I'd say the 2006 facelift looked a lot better. This is the most expensive car on the list starting at £4,000 with five grand getting a 2002 model with 85,000 miles on it. Taking the top spot in this video is a car that I'd say is well on its way to becoming a classic in the right condition, the Jaguar XK8, which comes with a 4.2 litre V8 engine, making 300 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.1 seconds. This car came as a coupe and convertible, both of which are cool for different reasons. The coupe looks like a more modern take on the E-Type and the convertible looks properly swag with the roof down, less so with the soft top up though. It also looks very similar to the DB7 with which it shares its platform. I would aim for the classic trim personally as it's more luxurious and given these aren't meant to be crazy fast anyway by today's standards, in my head you have to go down the luxury cruiser route instead which offers more leather, more tech and more overall comfort. These start at the 3.4k mark with 5k getting a 2002 model with 100,000 miles on the clock. Low compression leading to engine failure, excessive oil consumption and a few other issues are known to be problems on the earliest xk 8 in particular. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new, massive thanks to the page that support to you guys as well for watching, a quick reminder on those likes as well, I will do it, I'm crazy. And if you want to see some more expensive Grand Tours then click up here and subscribe down here.